Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to host a fish networking server on Vulture.com. Vulture or Vulture uh, is a very good uh, cloud, cloud provider that allows you to host uh, virtual private servers, uh, databases and a bunch of other stuff very easily. I personally uh, used it a bunch of times before for testing and for some uh, limited time reduction stuff. Uh, and it's like one of the best um, uh, cloud providers ever. Uh, so in this video, as I mentioned, I'm going to show you how to use fish networking to create a game and then create a server for that game and host it on Vulture.com or Vulture.com. Uh, so I'm going to be using fish networking 2.3.9 experimental, which you can get from GitHub. Net, uh, GitHub and I'm going to leave a link in the description. Uh, let's go and dive straight in. So the first thing is I have a Unity project here which I have already created. It's a very simple game so we won't go over everything. I'm just going to show you the important stuff. So first as you can see I have four scenes. One called default scene, another two called uh, scene one client and scene one server and a final scene called scene two. Um, in my build settings I have placed them in this uh, order and right now I am in the scene loader sorry in the default scene um, scene okay uh, in this scene I have a game object called scene loader and it has a simple script that uh, it's called scene loader it has two fields server scene one name and client scene one name inside this script I do a simple check application.platform like checking whether the application is running on Windows Server Mac OS uh, or OS X server or Linux server if so I load the scene of uh, like scene 1 for the server otherwise I load the client scene 1 okay pretty easy and then I have a menu script which just has a button which I use to connect to my server and I have a bond script which simply is just a an object that moves and rotates using uh, the WASD keys and I have a player script here which has three RPCs simply just to spawn a bond object and to despawn it and to disconnect from the server then I have a HUD or heads up display script that simply allows me to spawn, despawn, or disconnect my current player. Okay, this uh, what I just shown are pretty simple uh, stuff. Uh, I have made tutorials before that should have you know covered the basics of how these things are done. I suggest you check them out, and I'm going to be uh, leaving a link to the finished project in the description down below so that you can check the project out for yourself and learn it at your own pace okay so let's close all these scripts here and now let's go to one of the most like confusing things not like for fishnet or for any particular uh, networking solution but to some people who are new to networking uh, sometimes in your uh, like when you're trying to connect to a server you like the game won't connect or just it will tell you that it's trying to connect but fails this is due to some misconfiguration in your like IP address port number etc okay so what I have right here in my scene one for the client is a game object called network manager and some other UI and game related things in my network on my network manager object I have a tugboat component, a server manager component, a client manager, and a default scene component. Okay. In my client, uh, sorry, on my client network manager, as you can see, I have set my client address to my old Vulture server, but we are going to change this, so let's leave it blank. Okay. And I have set my port number to 7770, uh, which is just you can use any port number but make sure to use both uh, sorry the same port number on both uh, client and server okay and as you can see in my server scene one 
I have the exact same network manager except for some slight differences mainly that as you can see I have start on headless here set to true and I have a player spawner component so when a client connects uh, a player object will be spawned for it okay also the difference between uh, the server and the client network manager is that on the server one I have my offline scene set to scene one server and in my client one or on my client one I have it set to scene one client but both use the scene two as the gameplay scene okay so pretty simple stuff now let's go ahead and create our uh, virtual private server okay or server whatever okay go to the browser go to vulture.com log in with your uh, credentials and then go to product step click on instances I already have it selected and I'm going to click on deploy server okay this is a paid service of course uh, I have already subscribed for like ten dollars for the sake of testing uh, uh, on, and for showing you how to do things so I'm going to go ahead and select cloud compute you can also choose any of these but for the sake of uh, demonstration I'm going to choose every like every cheapest option okay so I chose cloud compute I chose regular performance uh, sorry until regular performance you, of course in production you're going to need or like would need a high performance AMD or Intel uh, CPU so I suggest you choose one of these uh, options here but I'm going to choose the regular one then I'm going to go ahead and select a server location the closest one to me is uh, Frankfurt in Germany so I'm going to select that and I'm going to go down to the server image you can see that you can select a bunch of different operating systems keep in mind that Windows uh, servers are paid although in my opinion uh, they are better because you know they allow you to just build uh, a Windows game and a Windows server, um, which should you know reduce the potential for like misconfiguration, uh, asset corruption, different build stuff, you know. But for this video, I'm going to choose Ubuntu, and I'm going to choose 22.404 uh, LTS, and I'm going to go down here and select uh, sorry underneath ser server si size. I'm going to choose the $5 a month and 25 uh, gigabyte SSD, which is just for uh, testing. Uh, also, as you can see, Vulture has a bunch of, you know, different uh, hosting options. Uh, usually, in my, you know, production stuff, I use the $40 one or the $80 one. But for testing, again, I chose the $5 uh, a month. Also, you need to keep in mind that... Uh, the server requirements will differ from game to game okay so your game might be of very high quality or require too much uh, random access memory or does some cpu intensive things you know so uh you might want to choose a tier uh taking into account these uh things okay i'm going to choose the five dollars as i said and then go down here we're not going to keep the server around so i'm going to disable uh automatic backups and underneath additional features here you can enable ibv6 but i'm not going to use it so i'm just going to leave it you know it doesn't harm anything it's not bad and you have a bunch of other stuff that we're going to leave as is okay there are some ssh keys that you can add sorry if you have ssh keys that you would like to add you can click on add new but i don't have one so i'm just going to leave it as is then i'm going to go down here to server host name and label I'm just going to call it test server one. Okay. Once you do this, Vulture will uh, display the pricing down here. And what I like about it is it, that it's 100% like transparent. There is no hidden charges, which I like. And they charge you by the hour. And if you destroy your server, like if you just use it for an hour or two and then destroy it. They won't charge you for anything but these two hours okay so let's go ahead and click on deploy now this will take a bit so i'm going to cut the video here and get back to you once it's done okay now i have checked and the server has successfully uh, been created 
Now, in order to manage our server, uh, this we will not have you know a graphical user interface, but we will use the command line. Uh, this is very easy. It might seem intimidating to some people, but it's actually very very easy. Okay. Now I'm going to go to my uh, product tab again, just to show you everything. Click on my test server. Then I'm going to click on view console and it's going to show you this horrible <laughs> looking screen but don't worry it's all easy things now it will ask you down here as you can see to log in your username and password for this server are down here okay so since this is a you know a temporary server I'm going to show you all the steps so I'm going to type my username and it will ask for my password I'm just going to copy it okay going to open my console window again I'm going to you see this uh, menu here I'm going to click on it you see the clipboard I'm going to press it then I'm going to press here and paste my server password and then click on paste just give it a couple of seconds as the text needs to be transferred and it's not instantaneous so I think it should be done by now I'm going to click on the clipboard and hide everything then I'm going to press enter and as you can see it did start successfully now I'm going to clear all this mess and here I'm going to say sudo apps get update okay just to make sure that all the dependencies are updated and I'm going to clear the console again now let's go back to Unity and let's go ahead and create our Linux server. Okay, I'm going to press on select file, build settings, choose dedicated server, which you can install from the Unity Hub, and I'm going to show you how. Okay, everyone, uh, I forgot to mention during the video, or sorry, to show you in the video how to uh, install the dedicated Linux um, server build. So I have Unity 2022.1.11 here, F1, installed. So I'm going to go ahead and click on add, uh, this cog icon here, then select Add Modules. And I'm going to disable uh, Visual Studio because I have it already installed. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to select Linux Build Support, Linux Build Support Mono and I'll IL2CPP, and then Linux Dedicated Server Build support okay make sure you have the three following modules installed without them you won't be able to complete the tutorial select your target platform and choose Linux okay since this a development build I'm going to check uh, development build and script debugging okay and I'm going to click on build clean build and choose my directory and my project name I'm just going to call it my game to keep everything simple and press enter. It should take a couple of seconds to complete building. Okay. Alright. Once your server has successfully been uh, built, let's select all the files, right click and show more options, send to compressed or zipped folder. Okay, and I'm going to remove the extra uh, name, and I have now a mygame.zip file. Now you would like to, sorry, we would like to upload upload the file to the server. Now you can't simply just drag and drop it here. You need to use what's called an FTP uh, uh, client. In my case, I'm going to use a when a program called WinSCP, which is an open source and um, free uh, FTP client. Okay, it will ask you for the host name, the port number, and the username. Okay, uh, in my case here, I'm going to go back to Volter and copy my IP address. Okay, paste it as the host name, the port number. I think you can use any port number uh, but let's just leave it at the default 22 the username is of course root and the password is you know our password 
paste it here and we're going to click on login it's going to warn you that this server has you know unknown credentials that are not installed on your computer and stuff like this simply say yes and accept whatever since this is your own server you know and as you can see we have a view of our remote server to prove that this is our remote server I'm going to go to my console here and I'm going to write the command make directory a game server and I'm going to enter the server so game uh, sorry this folder or directory okay and as you can see I am inside the folder now let's go here and refresh and as you can see we have our folder here okay I'm going to double click on this folder that we just created in Windows SCP and I'm going to drag my zip file to upload it to the remote server Let's, it will show you this uh, dialog, click OK and it's going to take a bit to upload it ok and as you can see we have uploaded the file to make sure that the file has successfully been uploaded type uh, once you are in the directory in the console type ls which is a command that displays the list of files in the current directory and as you can see we have my game under my underscore game dot zap okay uh, there is a command in the terminal uh, that you can use called unzip and it's going to unzip the files inside an archive into the current folder okay so I'm going to say unzip my game dot zip okay and it has successfully unzipped the file let's clear the console okay and let's go ahead and make the the, fi the file called my game dot x86 underscore 64 executable which is this file here as you can see our game server if you try to run it right now it will give you an error and say um, permission denied so let me show you this my game.x86 underscore 64 as you can see it gives us permission denied okay uh, in order to fix this I'm going to type chmod plus x and give it my executable name my game.x86 underscore 64 and when I try to run my server now so under uh, sorry going to type period slash my game dot um, x86 underscore 64 and as you can see our server is running now uh, in order to connect to it I'm going to go ahead to my Volter uh, page I'm going to copy the IP address and I'm going to go back to Unity I'm going to go into my client scene select my network manager and I'm going to paste the client address here okay now when I go ahead and save and enter play mode if I click on connect you'll see that it's trying to start a server okay sorry trying to connect but it will fail uh, with the reason that the connection failed this is sometimes very frustrating for people as um, there is no info that you can use to debug this uh, issue but it's all related to the port number as you can see here we're trying to connect on port 7770 which uh, our server uses as well but it's not open on our server okay in order to do this I'm going to go to my console here I'm going to press ctrl C to kill my server I'm going to clear the console or terminal then I'm going to say sudo ufw allow 7770 sorry 7770 press enter and you're going to see two messages rule added and rule added uh, parentheses v6 okay uh, which should mean that our server has successfully uh, sorry our board has successfully been opened now I'm going to run the previous command to run our server and as you can see our server is running 
Now, if I try and connect, you'll see that the client connects successfully and I can spawn and move around like this. Okay. And let's go ahead and prove that this is working by going here, building for Windows. Okay. Switch to Windows Desktop here. I'm going to do a switch platform. Then click on clean build. Select my builds folder, Windows client, and press on, sorry, select select folder. It's going to take a couple of minutes to finish building, so that's okay. Almost done. Okay, and it's complete. Now I'm going to start this instance here. And don't forget, please don't forget to accept the firewall, uh, sorry, allow access in the firewall alert. Otherwise, nothing will work. Please keep this in mind. Now I'm going to minimize my game. I'm going to start another instance. And as you can see here, I'm going to connect and spawn, move a bit forward. And as you can see, our server here says that the remote connection for ID 1 has started. And I'm going to connect here as well. Ooh, and I'm going to spawn. Uh, as you can see, I forgot to add a network transform. That's why um, transforms aren't synced correctly. But this can be fixed by simply going into Unity selecting the pawn prefab and adding a network transform okay so that's pretty much it and if you go ahead in your server here and control C it'll disconnect and you see that the clients have both disconnected so I think that's pretty much it for this tutorial I hope you found it useful I'm going to leave a link in the description for all the resources that have been used in this tutorial, including the project, links to Windows SCP, links to Vulture, uh, or Vulture, and link to the version of Fishnet I used. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider um, liking it and subscribing. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.